In this short video, we will see the importance of a correct topology in modeling, animations, and proper material management. And to do this, we will see a simple example of a cube where we will apply an incorrect topology in the first case, while in the second example, we will see how to apply the topology correctly. Let's start by adding a simple cube. And suppose we want to modify the mesh in such a way as to create an extrusion on this face. Let's consider a workflow that many could follow. So let's enter Edit Mode. We select the face and press the E key and then the Enter key. At this point, with the S key, we can resize the face, for example, like this. At this point, we can extrude the face again. So I select it, press the E key, and extrude it in this way. Before we continue, let's stop for a moment and look at what we have achieved. Good topology is achieved when we can create the maximum number of faces in a square shape with a similar size and shape among them. This allows us, during the editing, modeling, animation, and especially UV mapping phase, to have the maximum flexibility. And above all, to distort the surface as little as possible. In this example, we realize that we have square-shaped faces correctly applied. But already in these cases, we see how the shape is not that of a square. But let's move on. Let's suppose now that we want to add more faces here because we need to further subdivide and shape these faces. And to do it, we have several options. Let's start with the most logical one that should be used, which is the method of division. So we select a face, and with the right button, I select the subdivide method. What we get is a number of faces equal to what we have set here. As we see in this case as well, we do not have square shapes. But let's now consider other methods of division that someone might use. For example, let's select a face, and this time, by right-clicking, let's select the command Triangulate Faces. In this case, not only did we not obtain squares, albeit deformed, but we actually obtained triangles. Triangles are the worst thing we can have if we want to achieve good topology. But we also have another method, so I select a face, and this time I use the poke faces method. This time I got some triangles again, but with an even more complicated and confused topology than the previous one. At this point, someone might also think, in case more faces are needed to work on, for example, because we want to shape details here inside to further subdivide these faces with the methods we have seen or using the subdivision method. Here we have a whole series of problems because not only as we have already seen, we do not have squares but triangular faces, but these faces do not have any topological continuity with the surrounding faces. What we have seen which may seem like an extreme example of modeling, is actually more common than one might think, because often, when we need to create additional faces to model part of the surface in detail, we apply the methods we have just seen. Now let's give an example of how we should go about applying a correct topology. We then add another cube. This time I am creating the face that I need to extrude, not by applying the extrusion method as done before, but by creating cuts. So I use the loop cut tool, or I press the Ctrl R keys. And then again, the same tool to make horizontal cuts this time. Of course, I could then move the cuts as I prefer, for example, like this. But as you can see, unlike before, I have created faces that are perfectly square. 
At this point, I can select the central face and extrude it as I did before. Obviously, the proportions are different, but the concept remains the same. Now, if I want to add details to the surrounding faces, I can select them all and apply the subdivision. Now we have achieved a perfect topology with all the faces in a square shape and with a similar shape and size among them. And this topology is essential in case we need to animate this object or we need to apply an armature. The correct topology ensures that all the faces will deform correctly. But this is also very important in case we need to apply the materials and therefore the UV editing. So we switch to UV editing mode and we select all the faces we just created. And now I separate the projection of the faces of both cubes to see the difference. And here is what we get starting from the simple automatic projection made by Blender. In the case of the cube to which a correct topology has been applied, we see that there is a perfect correspondence between the individual square faces and the UV projection. In the case of the incorrect topology, like in this cube, as we can see, the projection of these faces in the UV map is completely wrong. What we should do then is apply the unwrap method. So I select the entire mesh, press the U key, and use the unwrap tool. But as you can see, we do not get a correct projection. So I try the Smart UV Project tool. Now we can see the individual faces. But at this point, we don't even have continuity between the different faces. For example, this face is no longer contiguous with this one. So when we apply a texture, we won't have continuity in the texture itself. Of course, we could manually address these issues, but as you can see, we have greatly complicated the projection of the UV map between a mesh created correctly and one created incorrectly. This is just an example of the importance of proper topology when we model objects. So to summarize, remember when editing a mesh, to use tools that allow you to achieve as many square faces as possible and not triangular ones and a continuity of edges between them.